Well, good day, everyone, and uh, welcome to the shop. Uh, this is a little video I'm going to shoot today for one of my viewers called Matt, who uh, requested a bit more of a look and a walk around the Colchester lathe. First thing we need to do is turn on the three-phase converter. As you know, the Colchester is a three-phase machine and it re requires three-phase to make it run. All right, we've got three-phase online. All righty. If you haven't been in my shop before, uh, you can see the little setup that I've got. I've actually got a a CNC milling machine over here. I've got a tool and cutter grinder that I need to put back together and get it going. Um, you've seen the Colchester, my latest edition, and uh, you probably saw the uh, three-phase pedestal grinder and the old Waldy drill. And over the last week during lockdown, I built this Waldy drill stand, which contains a drawer. And of course, inside the cupboard where I can put my lathe tools and other things. I've got a welding trolley here, welding table, welding cart, my toolbox where I keep all my cutting tools for my CNC machine, and also all my lathe tools. Alrighty, so let's turn on the air compressor as well today, get this all happening. Turn the power on. Move this cord out of the way. And they're over here, I believe. A nice quiet air compressor. Now I'll take the rear guard off for you, the, the belt cover, just to show you inside. Now one thing you need to know, and this is something that caught me out, the Colchester has a little interlock switch here little button that when you take the guard off the machine won't start okay with the guard removed now you can see we have the back gears over here we have our two twin belts here we've also got a third belt way down in here which might be a little bit hard to see and that third belt runs that oil pump you can just see it down the bottom there so there's a little hydraulic pump there which pumps oil all the way up to the headstock gears and uh, keeps that well lubricated. Now to check the sump of this machine, it's down here, there's a dipstick in here and there's a tank in there. I believe it holds a, a shell product called uh, Telus, Telus Oil 27 and I think it's hard to get now but I believe it's just a hydraulic oil but I'll um, confirm that at another time. There is a, another gearbox here which you'll have to fill manually. Drain plug here, fill plug here. I need to top mine up because I don't have any oil in the sight glass. And there's one more oil tank over here for the saddle. And the filler plug is here, all right? And that's the sight glass for it here. And this is the little hand pump that when you pump it, it shoots oil through there, okay? Now I do have the manual for this and I can provide a link in the description. I found it online in PDF. And uh, what I'll do, I'll try and put a link in the description of where I found that. Okay. Now when you put the cover back on, there's two locating pins on the bottom. This is a fiberglass cover. And these two locating pins go in the holes in the casting. Now on my machine, because it came from a school, it's got an e-stop switch on the bottom here. And you have to reset the button there. Now we're going to make sure the e-stop is reset here. So it's captive switch. And it should start. Once it starts, you'll see the oil pump up. Now 
able to control the speed of the lathe. It's as simple as moving the dials up here on the headstock and uh, matching the colours. So if you go green up the top here, green here and green around here, you get 1030. All right. So I will actually go a bit slower than that. We'll bring it down to 770 or 320 actually. Now to engage the spindle in, a, in the correct orientation, uh, out and down, and uh, the lathe is now running. Now to auto feed, it's as simple as just lifting up this handle here. And now we have power feed in the Z. If you wanted to change the power feed, you simply drop that lever out, engage the cross slide one, and pull that up there again. And now we have power feed in the X direction. Okay, just to confirm, lift the lever up to engage the power feed in the Z. Drop it down to disengage to engage the cross feed. Pull out this one here, engage it up, and now we have power feed in the X. So over here you've got all your all your thread pitches for imperial and metric, uh, what you need to be in. It will also tell you, if we just zoom in up here, what what gears you've got to have set up in, in the back here, your back gears to get the correct uh, ratio. Um, now, to engage the half nut for threading, we either got to be in Y or Z over here, all right? So I put it in Y now and I start it up. Okay, you should be able to see both lead and feed screws turning now. Now to engage the half nut, we we'll spin it around here. It's this lever here. And as you can see, the machine is feeding quite rapidly now, cutting whatever thread I've got it in. Obviously to make the spindle turn in reverse. If out and down is forward, out and up is in reverse. You'll see the spindle turning in reverse over here. We can drop that out as well by jumping on the foot pedal. And you'll see it disengage and stop the machine. To turn the power off now, we just simply hit the stop button. And that's a captive E stop button. Okay, Matt was asking on the video in the comment section, he goes, what are some of the future improvements you do to this lathe? Well, I would like to put a proper chuck guard over here. Now with the chuck guard on, it would also have an interlock switch just to bring it up to specs a little bit more. Um, however, that can wait. That's not important. However, the next thing that I believe is very important is a digital readout. And I'd fit the digital readout scales to either this side or the other side and fit the Z up along here. Now, the problem I've got to worry about is that my lathe also came with a taper turning attachment which bolts onto the back here. So I've got to make sure the scales that when I bolt them on don't interfere with that as well. All right, um, you'll notice here that all my dials are imperial. And being imperial measurement, um, that's probably why I wouldn't change the dials. I just put a DRO in and use the metric on the, uh, on the uh, digital readout in instead. All right. Now, there is one other thing with my lathe. The brake doesn't work. Even though it dis disconnects the power or drops out the, the lever, I think the brakes um, need replacing. Now to get to that, I'd have to pull the back cover off again, mm -hmm. remove this cover here and the braking systems in here. I'm not sure how much that would be. What a, one of those things to be determined. Now, I still have to get the oil to fill up this box here and to fill up this box here as well, okay? The oil in the master tank is fine, it's got plenty.
So guys, I tried to get the paint matched as best as they could. Uh, so I went to the local paint store and uh, took in a couple of panels and they tried to match it. And I think they didn't do too bad a job. I still got some leftover paint. It would have been better to be spray painted. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't want to go to that extreme. I just used a brush and a roller and I'm, I'm happy with it at the end of the day. I want to use the machine. I don't want it as a showpiece. The badges I got off eBay and they're a little bit expensive. They're probably 20 or $30 each Australian. They came from England and this one here has borne them. Problem with this is the holes didn't line up so I could only get two of the holes and the third one is way off. But anyway, I'm not, I'm not too concerned about that. I've got lots of accessories with this lathe. And some of the accessories are in here. So I've got all these Morse tapered drill bits down in here. And there's actually a crap load of them. So heaps of Morse tapered and so they'll all need to be resharpened. Um, the other attachments I got are all in here. So I've got the four jaw chuck, I've got the taper turning attachment, I've got the steadies both travelling and fixed. So yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Alrighty, uh, if you've got any other questions, feel free to put them down in the comments. And uh, once again, look for in the description, I'll put a link to that manual for the Colchester. Thank you for watching and uh, stay safe, guys, and I hope you're well in these uh, terrible times. Thank you.